Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Nick Armenis and in today's video I'm going to cover off my best ASX stocks for January 2022. Guys if you do enjoy my content please subscribe. Uh, I will promise the next video will be on time. Just had a lot on. Um, I hope you've all had a good new year but let's get into the video. Okay, as always guys, I'm not a financial professional, definitely not financial advice, just sharing some ideas with you, a starting point for research. Um, if you do need financial advice, go get it because I'm definitely not the person for that. So, okay guys, theme of the month, inflation, rate rises, and growth meltdown. So obviously, if you have been watching any amount of news or follow financial markets, or even if you just follow the stock market, you will have heard a lot of talk about inflation and rate rises. And I know a lot of you hold quite a few growth stocks. And this is a prime example why you would never wanna over index or put all your eggs into one basket because when something drops hard, like it has in this instance, growth has been dropping now for a few months. This isn't the first time we've talked about this theme, but let's cover off exactly what's going on. So inflation in the US is causing the Fed or the Federal Reserve to bring forward rate rises. So these are happening faster than people anticipated. And so the market, is marking down high PE stocks and high growth stocks or stocks that have, you know, a projected, their valuations are projected on future cash flows. That said, guys, a lot of this inflation is related to the pandemic related yeah, issues such as port staff shortages and other staff forced into isolation due to the virus and all these other supply chain issues. Australia also released a, a high inflation print as well. So if you have a look just in uh, on Google in some news, uh, you'll see that Australia's inflation print was much higher than people thought. Uh, the environment has very much been moving to risk off. So look at the crypto markets, which are really a proxy for risk appetite, as well as growth stocks. Uh, you can see those have really been penalized now, right? Higher rates mean discount rates on stocks change. So remember, a lot of businesses have taken on a lot of debt. So as that interest rate goes higher, the valuation of those stocks needs to change. And these higher PE names trading on future cash flows have been hit hard. That's not to say these are bad businesses. Um, the valuation just got very, very expensive. And the moment rates change, the PE ratios need to adjust and change with that. So lots of quality names have been caught up in this. So it does create some amount of opportunity for us. So what am I doing? So I like having a shopping list of things when I wanna buy. Um, but I thought that are too expensive, right? So I keep this shopping list in a watch list. Now you might want to use this uh, in your current uh, share trading platform. You know, if it's Comsec, Superhero, Self-Wealth, any of those. At the moment I've been using ShareSight to, uh, for a lot of my watch list and performance tracking. I do also have an affiliate link uh, with them, just uh, full disclosure. But uh, it is a very good piece of software to track and keep watch lists and actually go back and see had you bought this, how it would have gone, because you can enter trades manually and things like that. So I will do a full video on that down the track. Um, I also sift through stocks that have been hit harder than others uh, or have been hit hard and they're kind of, they're good businesses, they're better and they should have been hit. So at the moment, a lot of smaller mid cap names have been unfairly punished. Um, they shouldn't have had huge amounts. Um, so these businesses that you wanna look at shouldn't have huge amounts of debt or relying on huger, on, uh, on crazy future valuations. You can find some of these businesses as well if you really like them. Um, and now they're at lower prices, you should like them even more, right? So the thing is, you just don't know how long this could keep going. <clears throat> so if you wanna be safe, I would avoid things with high debt or huge valuations. But this is totally uh, your call. And if you like some businesses, go in and jump in, okay? I also try to go to the basics, guys, and just find some high quality businesses that are safe and will do well in an inflationary environment. So I first cover off my interesting mid and small, uh, so I first cover off my interesting mid and large cap names. The first one is Megaport One, ASX ticker MP1. So what does Megaport do? They are a tricky business to understand guys. So they operate a platform that enables customers to connect their network to other services, as well as creates agile network that connects in multiple regions and Megaport virtual edge platform that enables businesses to connect to Megaport's ecosystem of service providers. So think of them as uh, a cloud connectivity tool, guys. So you've heard of the cloud. This is a cloud connecti connectivity tool, um, and it does have quite some big names and is able to link to a lot of the big uh, cloud providers such as AWS, Salesforce, Google Cloud, uh, Amazon, it's, sorry, um, uh, Microsoft's Cloud, Azure, all sorts of names. 
So they got smashed yesterday. They were down 9.93%. They're currently trading at $13.33. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity to buy a great name at a reduced price, basically, guys. It's 52-week range is $10.67 to $22. So it is very fast approaching that 52-week low, and it may get there, giving us an opportunity to buy this really good business. So it's got a market cap of $2.1 billion. Uh, my investment thesis, guys, as I said, great business that's been hit hard in this sell-off. It's down 39% off its highs. Um, offers a great on-demand, flexible solution for customers. The move to the cloud continues to accelerate, and Megaport is in a prime position to benefit from this. It's, it's one of the very few ways you can play cloud, uh, the cloud, I guess, acceleration uh, on the ASX. Uh, they've managed to cycle a strong comparable period from last year, and revenue was still up 8%, which is very good because they had a boom during COVID uh, and they still managed to cycle that and actually continue to grow. Another growth avenue for them, guys, is they've launched a partner portal that allows partners to resell services, expanding their sales force without hiring. So the other thing I liked was they've got long-term deal commitments, uh, which form the majority of their new contracts with 64% being between 12 and 36 months, which is a really good sign. The next business, guys, is Fisher & Paykel Healthcare Corp Limited, ASX ticker FPH. So what do they do? They provide a range of humidification products such as ventilators and nasal high flow for adults and infants. Within home care, they're the leading provider of CPAP devices and humidifiers for those who suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. So you would have heard of ResMed. They sell a similar device to ResMed as well as for sleep apnea. Currently trading at $26.88. They have a market cap of $15.5 billion. Their 52-week trading range is $25 to $34. So they're definitely heading towards that 52-week low. P e ratio of 31.96, which may seem high, but it's a very, very um, solid business that continues to drive earnings growth. They do also pay a small dividend of 1.37%. My investment thesis, guys, it's one of the very few COVID beneficiaries. While it didn't beat last year's numbers, it still delivered really amazing results. Uh, if the virus is here to stay, then this business may long get a long-term benefit from the products it sells uh, in the space. Uh, it's got a strong history of growing revenue and share price growth. Has definitely stagnated in the last few years in terms of the share price growth. Uh, but I think that's because it, it had such a big run that it took a few years to consolidate. And they're doing really, really well again. So with their very high gross margins over 63%, and the fact that it solves real respiratory issues, uh, then this business is a safe one. And that's what I like in this environment. So definitely one to add to your watch list. The next one is one that I have mentioned before, PWR Holdings, ASX ticker PWH. So what do they do? They're involved in the design, prototyping, production, testing, validation, and sales of cooling products and solutions to the motorsports, automotive, original equipment manufacturing, uh, automotive aftermarket, and emerging technology sectors for domestic and international markets. They really build cooling products for cars, especially in Formula One, guys. They're currently trading at $7.42, which is actually lower than the last time I spoke about this stock. And the reason I obviously like it is it's a great business and we're getting it at a better price now. So the 52-week trading range is $4.38 to $10.31. It's still kind of in the middle. It's held up reasonably well in this sell-off because of the fact it's quality. But one I'm watching because I really want to get in, but I thought it was too expensive, right? Still got a PE ratio of 44. So me personally, I would like this to come down a little bit further into the sixes, probably low sixes is where I'd like to kind of be looking at it. Mark cap of 744 million. Investment thesis, incredible track record of growing both top and bottom line. This strong growth is continuing with a recent earning update for the full year being very, very strong guys. NPAT was up 28%. EBITDA 23%, debt down 53%, dividend up 49%. Interestingly, their cooling systems are used by every Formula One team, guys. Their emerging technologies division is working on cooling systems in new industries, like for electric vehicles, aerospace, missiles, and defense. And they've actually received AS9100 for aerospace and defense uh, rating, uh, I guess certification, sorry. So definitely want to add to the watch list. So some interesting high risk small cap names. The first one is Life360, ASX ticker 360. 
So what do they do? The company's core offering, the Life360 mobile app, is a market-leading app for families with features that range from communications to driving safety and location sharing, as you can see on the right here. They're currently trading at $7.08. Got obviously got a bit smashed yesterday, down 7%. Uh, their 52 week range is 371 to 14, so they're kind of smack bang in the middle of that. We've got a market cap of 1.36 billion. Uh, investment thesis, so the app plays to an area where people are willing to spend. Safety of family and pets. It's a fairly cheap way to give parents a peace of mind. Uh, as you know, the app's costs aren't huge, but they are ongoing revenues for this business. Uh, really strong recent update shows this business is starting to deliver. So. It's the third consecutive quarter of record quarterly subscriber additions, which drove 62% direct revenue growth. Global monthly active user base of 35.5 million was up 37%. Plenty of cash on hand, 231 million US. They did do a capital raise. Uh, and as part of that, they bought Tile, which you've probably seen, which is gonna allow them to become a more dominant platform with a broader suite of products. It's basically a tracking app, right guys? You can put this Tile onto things and track it like your laptop, phone, uh, a kid's school bag and things like that. So it's a subscription model, which I like, which means they get recurring revenue. So I really like this business. If we can pick it up at an even cheaper price, I'll like it even better. Nitro Software is another one that I have mentioned in the past, ASX ticker NTO. So what do they do? They're a global document productivity software company. The Nitro productivity suite is what they offer. It provides integrated PDF productivity and e-signature tools to customers throughout a horizontal SaaS and desktop based software suite. They're currently trading at $1.84 uh, and they're pretty much right at their 52 week lows. Um, they've traded as high as $4. The market cap is 453 million. Investment thesis is, is pretty simple guys. These This is a very interesting business that offers a cool product which is quite unique to the ASX in the tech space. And it's an alternative to what Adobe and DocuSign offer, which have huge market caps. If these guys can just take some small portion of that, they're gonna have a much bigger market cap. So roughly 90% gross margins, which is amazing. They're a founder-led business. Uh, net revenue retention growth from existing customers is 118%, which is high. No debt, um, great marketing team with a strong history of growing tech companies. So I like this one. Definitely one to watch in this kind of market crash. And the next one is Playside Studios, ASX PLY. And I know some of these I have mentioned in the past, but this business, guys, is one to watch due to the emergence of the metaverse becoming very, very, I guess, prevalent in news. So they're basically an independent game developer, guys. They have a bunch of titles and they have partnerships um, with other businesses, you know, like uh, Hollywood Studios, such as Disney, Warner Brothers, and Nickelodeon. They team up and make games in that space. They do have a portfolio of over 52 titles across four platform platforms, mobile, virtual reality, augmented reality, and PC. So it's also VR and AR play, very rare to find on the ASX. Currently trading at 86 cents. Uh, it was, it's 52 week trading range is 25 cents to $1.32. So it's kind of heading towards the middle-ish. Uh, has a market cap of 348 million. As I said, I know I talked about this in July, and it's been doing really well since. In July, it was around the 30, 40 cent mark. So if you'd bought it, then you're still up significantly. Uh, it's one of the few metaverse plays on the ASX. As part of the capital raising in November, um, the proceeds they did say would be going to a dedicated R&D team to blockchain gaming linked to the metaverse. So this is an exciting way to play this and one of the few ways to do it on the ASX. Uh, they appear to have great game titles, guys, collaborations and licensing agreements, and they have a good mix of their own IP and doing work for others. Obviously, their own IP is gonna be far high margin, so I do like to see, I would like to see them focusing on that. It's a founder-led business. They have plenty of cash to keep expanding. Overall, it's gonna come down to two things as always, guys, the content, game titles, and how they control their costs. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I did add a few more than I normally would. Um, please subscribe if you wanna see more content. I'll keep releasing these monthly videos and also do some new content, some shorter form content as well. I will try and get on TikTok as well because I know a lot of people are on there um, and, and put that on shorts as well. So thanks so much for supporting me guys and here's to a big year.